Al, I have the pleasure of being joined by Brooke Eby. Brooke, thank you for being here. What does it mean for you to be here at Dreamforce this year? Well, thank you so much for having me. And oh my gosh, I would say for the last year, I've really considered myself as having two jobs. During the day, I build out partnerships for Salesforce. And then by night, I'm just working to bring ALS into your front doorstep, really. So the fact that the last few months, Salesforce has really encouraged me to blend those two worlds together. I'm just so grateful to be here. And what you're doing is so important because you just you. do so much to demystify. Something that I think a lot of people don't know much about and are a little bit afraid to yeah. actually ask questions or find out about. You're very vocal. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your path to go on this mission. Yeah, the first couple of months, I wish I recorded them because I was not nearly as vocal. It was pure survival for me once I got diagnosed. I had two to three months where I was just in shock and not knowing what my life was going to look like. But I got invited to a friend's wedding where I was a bridesmaid and I had to show up using a walker in front of all of my college friends. So it was kind of trial by fire. I remember walking into the wedding and looking at my best friend and being like, this is way too embarrassing. Let's go home. I don't want to be here. And she was like, it could be embarrassing or, you know, we could just really make it fun and make a good night out of it. And like two hours later, we had the bride limboing under my walker. <laughs> I was giving people walker rides all over the dance floor. So that was really when the switch flipped. And since I was able to laugh in front of them, I figured, why not try to share this on a bigger scale and see if people are interested in learning about ALS, which so many people don't know anything about at all. And I love that the or you could do this or right? Right. you could do or. it another way altogether. Exactly. What is the biggest misconception that people have about ALS? We work under totally false assumptions as it relates to ALS. We assume that it affects an older generation. I was 29 when my symptoms started. We assume that it is largely a genetic disease. 90% of cases are not genetic. No one in my family has this. And then I think the biggest one is that we assume it's really rare when in reality, one in 300 people get ALS over a lifetime. We assume it's rare because it's a very quick death sentence. You die in two to five years from diagnosis. And so there's not you know, a whole population living with it at one time. So as you said, you've got two jobs, two gigs, right? You're doing Salesforce during the day. And then of course, you're really educating people about ALS uh, in all the other hours of your day. Walk me through a typical day for you. ALS has changed my days completely. The diagnosis really means that your brain is no longer communicating to your muscles. So that means with ALS, you lose the ability to walk, talk, move, eventually swallow, and eventually breathe. So it changes your day-to-day -day quite a bit. In the last year, I went from a cane to a walker to a wheelchair in a matter of like six months. And so I've had to adjust a lot of my life but luckily Salesforce has really adjusted with me and we're figuring it out as we go. But I'm so thankful that, you know, they've been there to support me through all of the changes, like working remote or not traveling as much. Was there ever a time where you thought, you know what, I should stop working altogether? Or people told you that? A lot of people mm. question, why do you still work? But at this point, Salesforce is really additive to my life, especially now that I can bring the ALS advocacy component to my day-to-day -day life, it's been a blessing. How can people help outside of just knowing more about ALS? What would your ask be for everybody who watches all that you do? It's a great question. With Salesforce back in August, when I joined a work meeting one day, it was like a normal team huddle. There were 200 people on the call. All of a sudden a slide popped up with my face on it. And I was like, I didn't think I was presenting today. I did not prepare for this. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> and then my team of like 200 people decided that they were going to do something called the Levity Project. They wanted to move for volunteer hours and then donate to ALS. And so that was such a special moment. They wanted to really make my life better. And then in the last couple of months, the Salesforce executive team caught on to that. And they decided to share that with the entire company. So at this point, all of Salesforce is donating to ALS. They're getting involved with ALS. And now I think we want to broaden it to the entire Salesforce ecosystem. And everybody else as well, right? I mean, absolutely. Research costs money. And exactly. research is what brings a cure eventually. It is so nice to see you, Brooke E.B. Real pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure.